Hello, everybody. And I just want to let Grand Galvatron know that soon as our live segment Thursday was over, I went and looked up what it was. I should have known that. My son loved Transformers. So now I know what your name means. So hello, everyone. Yes, uh, Grand Galvatron was on here Thursday. Yeah. And knowing is half the battle. Okay. <laughs> so, yeah, I was trying to figure out Grand Galvatron, but they did throw in a few sewing, quilting, embroidery kind of terms, so I thought, I don't think it's a spammer. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Oh, I'm pretty good. That's what I wanted to talk to you about today. I woke up this morning and didn't want to get out of bed. I had started feeling a little depressed that this week, and it got worse, and it got worse, and it's been a tough week. And not for any obvious reasons well except financial what we found out about the motorhome and legal bills and stuff but we're okay it's just i guess it just added to the feeling of not being in control none of us feel like we're in control right now and it's really hard you know and then when all of these um when these riots are breaking out it that is very hard for me. I love everybody and I want everybody to be okay and and happy and so it got really tough. So I wanted to tell you about this. This morning I was laying in bed and I mean I had pushed pushed staying trying to stay asleep as long as I could. And I thought I just don't want to get up. It's the same thing over and over. I feel like in a way we're in the movie Groundhog Day, where every day we're replaying the same day. So I thought, what am I going to do? Am I going to cancel today's show? Because I don't, I don't, I'm not able to put on a happy face when I'm not feeling it. It's extremely hard for me. I'm, I wear my heart on my sleeve. It's just how I am. Yeah, I love, I love the movie, but it's, you know, but I'm realizing now how overwhelming it felt to feel like he was doing the same thing. But I wanted to tell you, I wanted to be, I'm able to talk to you now about it because I have good news about it. And I, Mark had been sensing that, you know, I, I've been feeling down and um, tried not to watch the news because it's so upsetting. And so he kind of came back, you know, was kind of trying to be funny and all this. And when I got up, and because he did come back and check on me, and, and I could tell he was trying. I did get up. I thought, I've got to get up at least. But I was still all depressed. And, and then he got frustrated. Like, you know what? I've been really nice to you, and I've tried, and now you're still depressed. And you know what? Then I got angry, and just getting angry helped. But I wanted to tell you something. I really thought about it, and I thought, go downstairs and go through the motions of getting ready. You know you're feeling depressed. You know there's a good reason for it. You do not want to go on to your group and be depressed because that's only going to hurt them. We're all feeling so much of the same feelings at the same time. And so I want to let you know what worked for me. I came down here first. I did a little bit of straightening. That helped. That gave me a sense of power. But lately, when I made those watermelon seed buttons out of polymer clay, I realized how much I'd missed doing polymer clay. So I saw a necklace. Oh, and I don't think I brought the picture down. But I had seen a necklace somebody was selling on eBay. And it wasn't, it wasn't something they made, as far as I know. I think it was something they had, and they wanted to sell it. And I thought, that is so pretty. And somehow I didn't, I don't know if it was just a little too much for me to spend, because you know how cheap I am. 
but it's so pretty and I saved the picture of it. So today I came down and I got out polymer clay supplies. And one of the things I loved about it is it had a little metallic glow to the beads. And the beads were brown and kind of like a, a this brown. They were brown. I'm frugal, Susan. And I got my, you know, this will help me roll it out. I didn't want to get my pasta maker because I, I, I'm just going to make beads. I don't need the pasta maker. And I got some of my tools. This puts a nice indentation in the bead to make it. All that helps it look just a little more professional. I got junk clay out because some of the beads are good size and I don't want to waste good clay for the middle. But anyway, to make a long story short, I even, when I was going through the cabinet, I just sat there, I brought my chair over and just sat and looked through everything. And I found some stamps I had bought and I'm going to stamp, I'm going to stamp the clay. And give it a little texture. And then from the, when I used to do clay sculpture, I found some of my tools. Like this is a reamer that I'll use to put the hole through the bead. And I found some gorgeous. Here's a Kato clay. It's kind of a coppery. Let me see what they named it. I'm looking. But Kato clays were just great gold this is a metallic gold and oh i've got some old granite colored ones i just put anything in here that i thought would work and i'm going to try to use some of these to make a kind of teal color bead tealy green like i'm going to add some of this teal with some of the blue and make it really pretty because you know i love wearing that color so, anyway, what I did is I packed all of this. And see, after I make the beads, but probably before, these are rub-ons, metallic rub-ons. And so I can add, it has silver, bronze, pewter, gold, all, all these different metallics. And you just rub them on. In fact, let me show you real quick. I'll take this piece of brown clay and I'll get some of this copper. And look, so here was the brown clay, but now look once I rub the metallic rub on. Isn't that pretty? And then you bake it and you're done. So I, after we finish today, I'm gonna go up in my favorite cozy chair I'm going to take my tote of my tote of my polymer clay supplies and I'm going to go up and just do something cuz lately I, I even had it on a list around here it said find something to do polymer clay with because I I enjoyed so much making those little watermelon seeds. So anyway, yeah, don't get in the hammock. I will fall asleep in the hammock. But I just wanted to tell you, if you're feeling like me, let me fix my hair. My hair has been weird lately. When you cut your hair yourself, watch out. But anyway, I just wanted to tell some of you, if any of you at home are having some of those same feelings that I'm feeling, just find, if there's been something in the back of your mind going, you know what, I miss basket weaving, or I miss this, or just start a new quilt program. A new quilt project, pardon me. Because sometimes we go, well, I've got to finish this and this before. You know what? Right now, I don't think we need to say I've got to or I should. Those phrases go along with a feeling of guilt. And I think we need to spoil ourselves a little. And then I think I might go for a ride and maybe go look for a milkshake. Who knows? But I think that I need to get out and uh, do some different things and have some fun. So, and also another thing, I haven't been walking. I really need to walk because we know that walking increases your endorphins. And when we're inside, we sit around too much. So I will work on it. But now I'm able to come to you 
with a good mood for the moment <laughs> with a renewed sense. And I just, the only reason I shared this is because if you're having those, Oh, Kathleen, Oh, you are my kind of girl. There is nothing like a Dairy Queen strawberry milkshake, let me tell you. But anyway, I just wanted to just be real with you about my morning. And in case you're feeling some of those ways, we are here for you. We will listen to your, um, we will listen to how you're feeling and see if we can offer any suggestions or just a soft shoulder. Okay, but that's what we're about. And speaking of our group and what our group means, I can't imagine going through this crisis without y'all. I think I would have just laid down and said, I'm done. <laughs> just bury me over, you know. But I wanted to show you something because this is this group. This is this wonderful group. And those of you who decided to participate in our COVID heart at home, thank you. I have gotten in, I think, eight blocks. I've got eight, eight of the 13. I'm so tickled. So those of you who are still making them, just keep making them because we're excited. But look at these wonderful colors. Is this going to be fun to make a quilt out of this? And I love how bright... I love how happy, and thank you all. Thank you all. And they all are, they all have the maker's personality. And I love this. So, thank, yep, yeah, I like that, Diana. I like that. She said a neighborhood. So maybe that could go into what we're going to name this. Because I do have to figure out what we're going to name it so I can send you possible, um, I can send you possible, that's, I'm going to leave it there just to show. But we want to pick out a name because I might send you a font letter style if you want to put a name on your quilt, like in, in the border or in the, in the Oh, weren't you excited, Angela? Oh, Angela or Adele, whichever. And Michelle Lang, I got your block yesterday. Thank you so much. She did hers on the machine in embroidery. I'm like, whoa, I'm impressed. So, but I love all of you. You did a wonderful job. Oh, great, Adele. And I did talk to Marsha and, and, she has, she's making hers, but she's going to get them done. She's working on them. Oh, no. Oh, sweetheart. Yes, your father-in-law. Susan, this has got to stop, huh? You, oh, please give Rick a hug for me. I am so sorry. Susan and Rick have lost too many family members this year. Oh, we certainly will. And honey, when you need to go, you go. Uh, that, that, that's serious stuff. And I'm so sorry. Oh, Susan, I need to give you a big hug. I am so unresponsive 30 minutes ago. Oh, honey. Uh, so anyway, I just, a COVID neighborhood, <laughs> oh, I love that. So anyway, well, today I've got a couple interesting things. Oh, and I hope you won't mind if I brag just a little tiny bit. But also, don't forget, if you want something fun to do on a Saturday night, you can go to YouTube and type in, let me type this in. Yes, we are definitely keeping Susan's father-in-law close to our heart. I, I hope it's nothing serious, sweetheart. So, but if you type in, go to, to YouTube and type in Oracle Band. And if you type that in on YouTube on a Saturday night around 8 o'clock, my son's band gives a free concert on YouTube every, every Saturday at 8. And, oh, my gosh, it's 
fun and you get to watch little Russell because he's in his playpen in the foreground. But anyway, that that is a whole lot of fun. So I've been a busy girl yesterday when I was feeling a little blue. I came down and said, I'm going to work on something because it was something I, 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 I had. I hadn't wanted to stop working on it Thursday after we did our live stream. And with me, I know I've got to do something. I can't just sit still. So I got a lot of work done on this. And I hope you like it. Here it is. This is my molten... Mark said this is a sun. So it's a molten sun. And he knows more about that stuff than I do. But here it is. And all I have to do is put a binding on it. And did, didn't the rings turn out once? Once? Okay. And if you didn't watch Thursday night, when I put the rings on, they stood out awkwardly look like a cartoon but all I did was take my ink tents and I went in with ink tents and then when I quilted it I quilted the rings so and this I found some burgundy tool that I put as the rings that pass in front of the planet but I hope you like it and um Anyway, I the only thing I have left to, to really do before I bind it is, and I'm not going to do this. I'm just going to kind of show you. But I'm going to take my burgundy ink tents again, and I'm just going to end up going around the quilt and doing a little bit of burgundy here and there in the background to kind of like where it's casting off some of the light but you know so I'll just kind of go and and bring some of this burgundy out into the edge but it is done that means Thursday night we're going to start our self-portrait and it should be fun and it can be a cartoon it can be anything. You can take a picture of yourself, print it out, and just do the outline if you want using a light box or put it, tape it to a window. You can make, I will bring some, I will bring some examples. And feel free to look some up. Just go on Google and type in quilted self-portraits and it'll give you some great ideas. So, but we're going to be starting that because I got this finished. So, and then look on the back. I love looking at the back of a quilted. And I quilted it on my domestic machine. Yay, Deb, I'm getting better. It's not perfect, but I'm getting better. So, and you notice, I always show you my little uh-oh. Here, I kind of got it folded. So I'm going to take it out and do it again because I want it right and it's near the edge. It's not that big of a deal. But I had take, I took out the pin. I had it pin basted. And I took out the pin a little too early, but I'll fix that. That's not a big deal. But anyway, so, and one thing, I don't know why I did this, but I squared it up before I quilted it. That's not a good idea. I should have left it large. Quilted it and then, I mean, quilted it and then squared it. So you live and learn. Anyway, okay. No, I did, uh, maybe I didn't do that. It looked a little drawn up and I was worried. I think I would have left the extra one when I quilted it. So I might have misspoke on that one. So today we're going to talk about a couple fun things. I've got my cotton wreath hanging up on our display board with Cheryl's um, flamingo quilt and Nadine's. I miss Nadine. I miss her terribly. 
So I hope she'll come back soon. I know she's busy working out on the farm and the garden. And I know the COVID hit her hard, but I miss our Nadine. So let's see what you're talking about. And then I'll show you our two fun projects. All right. Let's see. But anybody who was here Thursday night, didn't the ink tents do a great job on those rings? Because they just stood out like a sore thumb. And I knew they would. And in fact, Mark was talking last night. He said, you know, you always say, because he had come down a couple times to look at it and he wasn't sure. And he said, you know, you've always said you'll get to your part about two thirds of the way into a quilt and it starts looking really weird. And but you always bring it around, and it's like absolutely, it's a, it. In in that way, quilts are very fluid. Um, there's so much you can do with them between the quilting and the painting and the fabric choices and all of that. So it, it's very very interesting. Okay, we do miss our Nadine. She is such a sunshine. So anyway, but um, no, I didn't put any new fabric in. I left that fabric and just did the ink tints. And ink tints gives you that ability to blend, to make certain things stand out. And it, it, it was just amazing. And I just kind of kept messing with it and putting a little bit of this and a little bit of that. And it works. So Akko is probably the same thing. We do miss our Akko. But they have farms. And both of them live on little farms. And so that this is a busy time of year. Yes, Diane, 57, you do need ink tents. Because it makes all the difference. It's much better. Some people say, well, it's cheaper just to buy fabric markers. But markers don't allow you to a, a blend and adjust the color. It's like they're like on or off, you know. Another thing I wanted to tell you, I read an article in, in Quilt, Quilting Arts magazine where she said the Dynaflow by Jacquard that I, I like using, it's not a dye. It is considered a paint. It's just a very low viscosity, very thin paint. I'm sorry, I was telling everybody that was a dye because it looked like a dye. It was clear, just clear color. And um, it has no opacity. Op <laughs> you can see through it. <laughs> so anyway, okay. Well, I'm going to bring you over here. Anybody else? Um... She's working on the farm with Jason. Yeah, when you have a farm, you're busy. Yeah, ink test gives you a lot more control. The markers are good if, like, let's say you're doing a little floral bouquet and you know what color you want for that petal. But if you want to do blending and stuff, it's that much harder with markers. They all have their place. I've even used oil pastels on fabric. So, in fact... Um, I have a quilt up on the wall. Let me see if I can show you. And it's the one with the sunflowers. You know, it's hard to see because it's behind that lamp. And the leaves were done with oil pastels too. So, you know, the beautiful thing about quilting nowadays is it all works. It all goes. Oh, you're starting over, Kathleen? I don't blame you. I don't blame you. You set the oil pastels. Thank you for asking, Susan. Oh, and somebody was asking Thursday, did I zigzag when I was sewing the pieces on? Yes, I did. For this one, I did zigzag to sew them on because I didn't want them fraying and fluffing at the edges. To set the oil pastels, you need to get some newsprint or um, a thin towel and lay on the pastels and then iron them. And the reason you have to cover them with something absorbent is because they do have oil in them. And you don't want to get the oil on your um, you don't want to get the oil on your work. So what we're doing first today, remember when I we're gonna make a little hobbit land. 
And this is for play. I'm using an old stained piece of um, muslin. And, oh, before we go into this, you might have noticed something behind me. And right now, during all of this COVID, when stores aren't able to be open, look for deals. What you see back there is a 30-yard roll of batting. It's polyester batting. It just got in an hour ago. And I got it from Joanne Fabrics. It's a medium weight. Because remember I told you I love polyester and I love a little thicker polyester to do my art quilts. Because the definition it gives. In fact, um, remember I told you I wanted my planet to have some loft. So see, it's puffy. And you can definitely tell on the back, too, that it is puffy. But I like, I like for my art quilts to have definition and loft. So I ordered a 30. It's only 48 inches wide, but most of my art quilts are within that parameter. And it's 48 inches wide by 30 yards. And I got a 30-yard roll. It ended up coming out to about $25. So that's less than a dollar a yard. That's my kind of deal. So I was real tickled. But be on the lookout if you need supplies. Because stores are anxious for you to buy supplies from them. And um, they've got some good sales. But I, I've been waiting for it to come on sale because I just finished one of my bolts. So, and usually when I finish up one, I go ahead and get the next one. So, anyway. Yes, yes, yes. In fact, I've got plenty of cotton batting because I use the polyester more now because I do um, the art quilts. So, now what I'm going to do here is this is, we've got two projects for today. One of the projects is to make a hobbit world, an imaginary world that where nothing is realistic. It's all fun. And in fact, oh gosh, I hope I brought down my other one. I also, I almost didn't do this today because I found, I learned how to do this from Susan Edmondson. And I just found out that they're doing an online quilt show, Mancuso is, and it's going to be the third week of June. And Susan Edmondson's teaching a class. And it is a virtual class. So everybody, anybody who, you know, can, I'm not sure where my, other oh here it is here it is here it is so this is this is the the little quilt the little art quilt I made in Susan Edmund Edmondson's class but you can now take it go to look oh that's a great idea Susan so you can go look on Mancuso website there their online quilt show, I think it's like June 25th, 26th, you can sign up in the privacy of your home, take classes from Susan Edmondson, who is so good at this. So I'm, I, I, I'm making up an entirely my own idea. I don't even want, I don't even want to compete with her. I would love for you to go and check out Susan and try to take one of her classes. She's a lot of fun and she is becoming quite a big name in the art quilt world. In fact, she even does a, she even, whoops, she even does a, like a self-portrait class. I'm not sure if it's self-portrait or um, some of my, hold on just a second. So I just picked up the paper that I had taken off of this and realized some of the, do you see I'm pulling it off? 
some of this fusible webbing stayed with the other side of the paper. So what I'm going to do now is carefully lay it back into place, matching it as closely as I can. There we go. Whoops, don't fold it on itself. All right. So let me get things out of the way. First, what I'm going to want to do is lay my background in. And if, you're, if they're asking what, me what kind of beads, I use whatever kind are free or cheap or easy. <laughs> Actually, the beads that were in that little house, these beads are, came from, I go to the dollar store and buy the eyeglass necklaces. And when the eyeglass necklaces break, I use those beads. <laughs> so anyway, I, you know, I'm, you're going to find out... Uh, Galvatron that I'm extremely, I'll use Susan's words, extremely frugal. So now what I'm going to do is I like this green for the grass. And this is some of the leftover fabric I had when I did, remember when I cut the fabric on the bias to get a nice, easy bias trim? And what I'm going to do is place it like this, okay? By placing it like this, then I'm going to have a Hobbit Hill because remember, I am doing just what I feel like doing. Okay? But this is a lot of fun because it's playtime. And let me get my glue, and I'm going to put my glue down, and I'm going to put it, put it on a little bit thick. All right, so now, and you can make your Hobbit Hill. I started to make a pattern for us, and I thought, oh, no, 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 no. A pattern defeats the purpose. You need light. Uh-oh. Thank you, sweetheart. Thank you. Thank you for telling me. All right. So now can you see better? I think my camera's having a little trouble. I've noticed that a lot of the enter entry photos on my videos are kind of dark. All right. So here we go. I hope you can see better now. Good, good. Thanks for telling me because what you see is so important. I'm taking a piece of my dyed fabric, and this, I think, was a dye, a dye works that kind of failed, but it's perfect for my little hobbit land. Okay, so I'm going to cut a piece of this. Oops, that one, that looks pretty good. And I'm not going to worry I'm not going to worry if this fabric is not dark enough because we, and, and even here, I cut it, but I'll put something in front of that. But I'm not going to worry if it's dark enough because we have ink tents, we have markers, we can do whatever we want. All right, so see how I folded it back so when I cut it, I know it'll be the right size. Okay, so now I can get that out of the way. I'm going to peel this back so the sky can go back behind. Okay. Now, I'm, and so see, I just used the muslin as a foundation. And I like having a foundation because that way I feel like my fabric, fabric is secured. And since I'm just showing you this real quickly today, I'm not sewing anything down. I'm just going to glue it. If I have to, some of it I might have to pin. But, and just so you know, I wanted to make this artwork a different shape. So I'm going to round my all my edges. Because I want it to just be fun and imaginary. 
and it can be the Hobbit or it can be um, let me see um, I think maybe I'll set it in like this and then I'm going to I want it to look like it's built into the hill so let me I want it to look like it was built right into the hill. All right. So let's see if we can do this. I don't want it right in the middle. Hmm. I'll put it here. Okay. So I'm going to iron it down. I'm being bold today, ladies and gentlemen. I'm being bold. All right, now I want it to have a little bit of a thatched roof look. So what I'm going to do is I've got a pencil here, and I'm going to let's see, make a thatched roof shape. All right. I'm just going to cut it. And this is for play. And you will not believe how much joy you will get out of doing this. And then this can become a little gift. It can become a little decoration. Like the one I already made with Sue Edmondson, I put it on my frame room door. And I love it because it's just a little bit of fun. And I know the word whimsical is overused. But... It makes you smile. And you know, right now, we could use all the smiles we can get. So, just be thinking. And then go look through your junk drawers. Go look through your sewing drawers. Go find whatever you little doodads and gee-gaws and bits and bobs that you can find. Now, see how I, I make it look like some thatching? And that's what all this is here, too. So, just, it's easier to do the design on this paper. Although, some would say, Deb, if you already had it on the fabric, you'd only have to cut once. And I would say, good point. <laughs> so, but... I'm just, I am not going to push myself today. I'm going to just have fun. So, but this is, this is the fun of doing these little quilts. Because, you know, we have to try to d be so perfect most of the time. And goodness gracious, that can be tough. Now, I first pulled out this fabric to do a thatched roof. But then, I don't know, I saw that, and I thought, oh, my gosh, that's so cute. So, whoops, let me see. I think I'll put it at a slight angle. So I need to, and you know, to try to get the paper off, just act like you're going to give it a little tear at the edge. Oh, and I'm sorry for you Thursday night people. I went to watch my Thursday night show I had no idea that my battery was dying. And y'all were all trying so hard to help me, going, Deb, we can't hear you. <laughs> There's static. <laughs> I'm so sorry. It was, it was absolutely that my battery was dying. And I apologize. I apologize. Okay. So I put it on a wide area of this fabric. And... But anyway, do take a look at the Mancuso show because they have over a dozen teachers and they're teaching everything from domestic machine quilting to long arm quilting to fabric um, thread painting. I mean, they've got a bunch, a bunch, a bunch, a bunch of teachers and courses and 
Ah, uh, so I was so excited when I saw Sue Edmondson's name on there. So I just wanted to put it put a word in for her. And um, that's why I'm not trying to usurp her. I'm not, this is something I've never seen exactly her do. I'm trying not to copy too many things of hers because I'd rather you learn from the best. But I did notice, and I was looking through my Art Quilt magazine, that there are several teachers who teach these fun, whiz whimsical um, quilt. So that's why I went ahead with this anyway, because I knew I would try to promote her class. I don't ever want to step on a teacher's feet because I taught at my local quilt shop. And you know what? When teaching is your profession, you don't want anybody taking away your revenue source and, uh, and, and, and taking your ideas and your creations. So I just, I just want everyone to know that she's teaching this course. It's going to, you're going to take it from the safety of your own home. And um, a lot of the teachers are offering kits. So if you, you don't have to go out and shop, you know, if you're like me and I haven't been inside an actual store since early March. So they are offering kits. You need to get your orders in immediately and they will then quickly ship your supplies to you. Then you just have to show up the day of the class and, and you will sit in your home at your machine and they will teach you right there. So I'm going to take one of the classes. I haven't decided for sure. But I thought, oh, I haven't been able to go to a quilt show or take my own class. So I'm definitely going to take one to so go to Mancuso and look for the online quilt show. I did look to see if they were taking quilts, if they were going to have like a quilt contest. But I didn't see anything about that. All right. So I think that's going to be my thatched roof. Okay, I'm um, iron that on. Uh, thank you. And then I'm going to take, I try to use up all my scraps. Ooh, this would be really good for some kind of little bushes. And I like the shape right there. So uh, this is easy. I'm just kind of trying to do some of the basics here with y'all and um, just to kind of make sure you know you can do this so easily. I mean, you can honestly see. Now, the fun is in doing the hand embroidery stitches and you can find those anywhere or you can make them up on your own or I can put some on our groups io site but that's where the fun comes in this this is laying the foundation and then the fun comes in how many doodads and everything you can add on to this because the more you add the not only is the prettier your quilt but the more exciting and the more meaningful and i'm going to get out my my jars of charms and put charms on it. In fact, when I took Sue Edmondson's class, she gave us all a deer charm. Let me see if I can show you. She gave us all a deer charm to put on our quilt. Isn't that neat? But do you see all the little stitches? Lazy daisy stitches, chain stitches. Um, oh, gosh. What, it, what do you call these um, French knots? Lots of French knots, straight stitches, rain stitches. I even I had a ladybug button. I forgot I put the ladybug button on there. And, um, and then you just put a backing on and wrap it around to the front. Isn't that cool? So, oh, Sherry Mercurio's here. Marsha's here. Hello, everybody. It is so good to see you all. So, okay, so now this is going to be just like some little, 
greenery or something that kind of popped in. So, and it's just a way for me to use up, it's a way for me to use up this little piece of fusible. All right. Oh, and I want to leave. Okay, I guess that'll be good. Now, I want to have a chimney on here. So, let me... And what I'm going to do, let me go ahead and put it on this fabric first, since I do realize I can save time doing it all at one time. All right. Let me press that. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a lumpy rocky chimney because this is a hobbit house and so you know they didn't go to the Lowe's to get their materials so I'm going to cut this out really quickly and please feel free to just chat and talk and I will try to make myself look Yes, and you know what? You can even go online. I mean, there is a wealth of everything. And if you can bring a picture up on the screen of your computer, you could gently lay a piece of paper, thin paper, and, and use a, a, some kind of gentle marker. And, oh, this is, this is going to be cute. There we go. That's a little close there. Now, if I put it here... Let me see. I think I'll put it right there. And you know what? Yes, it's a little close to the thatch. But this is a pretend world, okay? <laughs> like, I think they would have it up higher. Well, it's a pretend world. There we go. This is... And you know what? It'd be cute to kind of have it kind of go out a little bit. There we go. Because this is all pretend. So... All right, then I picked out this fabric for the door. So what I'm going to do here is cut out another piece for the door. All right. And then I'm going to do an arch top little cute little door. Okay. And then now that I have most everything laid out, I'll go and show you a few other things. All right. I'm going to pull back a little of this greenery so I can kind of tuck in the door. That'll give it a little bit of depth. It's just to tuck in this door. Okay. Now, I can come back later and I can add two little yellow-orange pieces of fabric to look like there's light in it. And so this is going to be fun. Okay, then I need a little window. So, and I'd like cute little shutters on it. So what... Hmm, maybe little green shutters. 
Let me go grab something. I'll be right back. I should have brought something for shutters. All right, I'm back. Let me see. We're going to make a couple little shutters. And remember, when you make your shutters, I'm going to draw them a little off kilter. Because that all feeds into this little fairyland world. So I'm going to put them. I'm using this design of this fabric to act like wood grain. And then, there we go. And then, whoops, I'm going to draw. And see, this is where you don't have to be an artist. In fact, it's better if you aren't because you want this to look. You want this to have a very rustic cartoon look. This is just pure fun. So, let me see. And this is where it doesn't have... It's You don't want it too realistic. Okay. Here's going to be one of them. And to get that paper off, just act like you're tearing the edge. I was one time taught you can draw, drag a, um, and see how I even put it a little crooked? And then really quickly, maybe I'll get this color. Two. I'm going to do a little window real quick to put right here. Then cut out my other. I like a house to look like somebody's at home and maybe dinner is cooking. I want it to be a happy, a happy little hobbit house. Now I sound like Bob Ross. It's a happy little hobbit house. But everything I'm going to make for the next few months is going to be very happy. <laughs> I need happy. So... I absolutely love, I put something on our site where in Belgium they got these oversized teddy bears, fuzzy teddy bears, and filled up a, filled up a um, roller coaster ride with these fuzzy bears, and oh my god, it's so cute. And so whoever put it online said, if there's somebody out there who could... Um, put this, you know, happy screams on it, would they? And somebody did. I said, that is so sweet. 
So I loved that. And the creativity that's coming out of people is just amazing. Okay. So let me get this a little better set up. There we go. A little window. Weren't those bears cute? Yes, the way that the, the ride shook them made it look like they were alive. It was the cutest thing. So now I'm going to put two little windows in the door because I want this to be a warm, loving home. So let's see. I'm just going to glue these on too. Or glue these on as well. Okay. Oops. That's a lot of glue. It doesn't matter. I don't know. That might, maybe I'll just leave it with one window in the door. Okay. And I'm just trying to show you that it can just, you can set it up this quickly. The setting up part is the part that's going to happen very fast. It is the, the, what takes time, but is the most fun is doing all the little stitches and the embellishments. I'm just going to put a little sunshine in the sky right here in the corner. Whoops. Just a little sunshine up there. And I may darken that a little bit later. All right. Right them. Might even. Add a little bit more intense sunshine. And what I will do is I'll either hand sew these down or I will um, come back with invisible thread. You know how I've done in the past, used... It, a mono poly. So there we go. Now I have a little sunshine. And what I'm going to do, don't worry, I know it looks, it looks a little odd, but I will come back with my stitching and do some cute little rays popping out of that. I'm just right now, I'm blocking in the design. Okay? Blocking in the design. All right. So, I know one thing that I want in this. And one thing I want is a tree and a swing. Because this is a happy place, okay? So, let me take... going to take some sticky, let me put it on this side, this side has more tree color, all right, and what I'm doing is just using the little bits, oh that's, oh that's a good root too, I like that. Okay. Oh, this is cool. That's going to make a good root. And then where this crosses over, let me cut it free. Whoops. Let me cut it free. Put it up here. Now 
And don't worry, too, we have one more topic to discuss. And that is face masks. I was very slow to face mask, and I admire and appreciate so much people like Cheryl and Diana Wright, all of you who jumped right on the need for face masks. So I've got something, a cute idea to tell you about that I've been hearing about and seeing popping up. All right. So now what I'm going to do, uh, when it comes off the paper, it doesn't act right. Okay. I'm going to kind of freeform cut this tree. All right. Okay, now, we'll put it right over here. And honest to goodness, I promise you, I did not have any idea of what I was going to do for this. I'm just kind of doing it as it comes, just to show you that it doesn't take a lot of planning. It doesn't take, you know, a lot of effort or anything perfect. You just throw it down, throw it on there, and have fun with it. And the more you embellishment, that's the more you embellish it is what's really going to give it the joy for you. And I'm a real big believer in that these projects should give us joy. I'm going to put this up a little higher, I think. Let me put this back under here. Oops. It stuck to me again. Okay. All right, so now I have this cute little tree, my happy little tree. Okay, and what I'm going to do from the branch is hang a little swing up here. So that'll come a little bit later. All right, now I'm going to end up, I will embellish it from here. But let's, let us, what I, and I you know what, I think... I think I am going, let me do a little bit of a treetop. All done. Because I want to do my own leaves, but. Oh, yeah, she did. Yeah, Adele, you did tell me about that. That's good to know. Yeah, feel free to tell them about that. Kathleen Ziegler, so do you make face masks? Ah. But I what I have been seeing coming up is now people realize face masks are probably going to be in our life for a year or more. So what I'm seeing is people going, okay, if they're going to be in our life, let's make them fun. And I totally agree with that. So I'll, I'll, I want to talk about that in just a bit. I bought some, brought some things over with me to show you for that. All right, so now on here, I'm going to make this treetop, and just going to kind of draw some ziggy-zaggy branches. All right. And you're at home, so you if you want to take more time and, and place it just right, you go for it. Because this, like I always tell you, the, this is your quilt. These are your fabrics. It's your time and talent. I just try to give you the ideas. But I use this already cut section. And I'm going to make the shape work. Because you know I'm cheap. I want to use up every little bit of this. All right. Let's 
Oh, thank you, Miss Susan. You're a dear heart, that's for sure. And we definitely want to find out about your father-in-law, sweetheart. Because we love you, Nikki and Rick, very much. And what hurts you or what makes you happy, it, what happens to you is something we care about very much. Now, I'm going to tell you, that's a little bit boring of a treetop. But do not worry because we're going to em embellish it. And I just wanted it there for a background because we're going to make it bigger and grander. But I'm just kind of re-cutting -shape these shapes. And, all right, so now let me quickly, I mean, I brought all, over all kinds of stuff. But, and I can always come back to it. But for right now, we've got so much of this background done. Let's move forward and see... And I like this because I can outline stitch this to look like hills and dales and valleys and shrubs. And, and in fact, I brought over some more if I want to do some darker fabrics. And I probably will. Like, it'd be nice to have a little bush coming up. In fact, I'll get ready and do that real quick before I put everything away. All right. Get my fabrics. All right, now this, let me bring out all the fun stuff. Oh, and I did have some um, interfacing because I wanted to remind you to, um, before you go quilting this, before you do too much to it, you might want to put a little interfacing on the back. Although it does have a foundation and the, the foundation gives it some stiffness too and here's my scrap piece of batting all right i'm bringing out all the fun stuff okay all right so i have a bag of my flosses so that yes i love all my fun stuff let me tell you so look at this i put this if you look this is in this house right there i just cut a strip of it and that's what you do you can make this into some of the part in fact whoops i can use a little strip of this to put on the tree or in the branches I even brought these little these little light bulbs that were from a Christmas necklace that broke. Because maybe the hobbits, are, I think they want. <laughs> uh, that's cute, Susan, in a munchkin voice. Because I, I think they want their house decorated. So I'm going to use these on it. I've got little bits and parts of yarns. This I thought would be so cute. And then I've even got some sequins back. And then this. I love this. I don't know what I'm going to do with it, but I'm going to use it. This is great to be a part of a plant or maybe on top of the house or maybe in the tree. I even have some blue lace because I might do a little cloud in the sky. I brought... Oh, I forgot I brought this. This is clear plastic. And if you wanted to be just too cute, you can cut it and glue it down over the window. So, oh, what happened to your husband, Teresa? Oh, honey, I'm sorry. I'm sorry he's ill. And then this is, I don't know what, this color may be a little dark. But look at this. This is, it's a glittery tiny little rickrack that I'll probably use to run up and down the hill. But I've got my flosses so I can do all my stitches. The, this would be so pretty for the flowers and this. So I have, I have a, believe it or not, whoops, sorry. I have a 
three drawer container upstairs. I mean, if I went to I went to a store and these were priced twenty five cents a piece, so I picked them up. Over time, oh yes. So you know, this is really that. Th and then I brought down these too because these are great. So, but this I'm going to run through the grass area, and here. I'll put this in the grass, and maybe I'll make like a little place that has little flowers. But let me show you here. So, um, I wish I could, yeah, I can probably get this a little closer with the good light. All right, this was a piece of velvet that was ruched up to make a flower. Then look at all the pearl cotton used to make the raindrops. Okay, and if you didn't want to do that, you could use you could use a running stitch and make a sky with clouds. But I took and braided this yarn to make a thick enough piece of stem. See that? Then here's these X cross stitches, and and oh, see these stitches did the roof line. And in fact, oh my gosh. You know what? Looks like I did a little bit. I did a little crocheted um, piece of thread there. Then, you know, and oh, and this door, this door was a heart shape. I forgot about that. And I did a little stick on Jim. Uh oh, he's in the hospital. Collapsed lung. Oh boy. Oh boy. Yes, we will definitely think. I'm sorry. So, and then here is a little shrub, and you see, just use the, use the um, DMC floss for that. And then I used, for the ground, like this is just a background, but then I can take all kinds of yarns and pieces of lame. And, uh, oh, look at this. Woo! Look at that. Yet I, every time people have throw stuff on a table and say, if anybody wants this, I'm like, yeah. I share, though. I, I try to be nice. But anyway. But um, so I'll, you know, cut strips of this, and you just stitch it down by hand. It's all done by hand. You glue it on first, then you stitch it by hand. And see these little decorations there were the ones that stitched it and you do it just on your foundation and then if you want uh, this one doesn't have any batting in it and you just lay a pretty backing bring it around tuck it under so there's no raw edges and you just do a hand blanket stitch on the end but you see how you can, yeah, you can do hand crochet. You can do just about anything. And the more you do, the better it looks. Because I really do think that's cute. I really do. I'm not that much of a hand embroiderer, but for a case or for a project like this, yes, I will do that. And I love, I mean, there's so many different ribbons, silk ribbons, everything and then these are supposed to be rocks in the landscape and you know what I could take and I could take and put if I can find some more beads like that I could put them on the chimney so I'm just kind of hoping did I give you did I did, did I give you any kind of idea for let me quickly do I what did I do? I'll just cut out a bush without putting a fusible on it. Let me grab a piece of this fabric. This is a Jenny Buyer. So, you know, Jenny Buyer really creates amazing things that I really enjoy in my landscape quilting. So I'm going to kind of make a little shrub shape out of this.
And, you know, I would normally put it on a stem and stuff. But in my Hobbit world, they don't really believe in messing with nature too much. And so they don't really trim them up into pretty shapes. They're just like little there. That's, that's a hobbit bush, don't you think? It just is kind of there. <laughs> and I have done a swing before. And so I use a nice thick thread that looks that I can make look like a rope. And then I will hang it right here. And then I will use a piece of my wooden fabric to make it look like a little wooden swing base. So, in fact, I'm going to draw it here just so I remember to do it. But I just come down like this. And I'll put real rope and just couch it into place with a knot. I'll put it around the, 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 the limb. And then I will just put a little wooden swing base with knots on each end. And so now I'll have a swing there. And then I'm going to want to do some birds in the sky. So I'll have to figure out maybe, I'm sure they have crows in Hobbit land. And this is a scrap from where I, um, and birds, you know, are pretty easy to do. You just all right. So here is my bird. And this could even be an apple tree. Whoops, did it the upside down. Hold well on. My bird has to be the right way for goodness sakes. But I'll do another one real quick. So the lake is still at 15 feet. It's come down a couple hundredths of an inch, but that's about it. So... Not camping this year. All right. So there are my two birds in the sky. Oops. I'm missing my little piece of sun. Oh, well. I'll find it. It's stuck to something. I'll either find it or cut out another one. But anyway. I wish I could find some white string. But I'll have to go look for some. But anyway. But I haven't decided yet where I'm going to use all of this. And I love the idea of lights. And all I'll do is just put them on here and stitch them down. But I think they would be really cute. Whoops. But anyway, so does that give you an idea? And then... Turn it into this, and then you've got a work of art. And like I, like this. Let me see. And so you can even, you know, just scrunch it so it'll look more natural. Oh, look at look what I just realized. It has a frayed edge. That's perfect to do a little patch with the grass sticking up. You could even cut pieces and do it along here, the edge of the house. But and you know what? It's very easy 
to make it. I just have to start pulling threads and I can make it even more grassy. Look at this. Isn't that fun? You're 10 minutes behind. I'm sorry, sweetie. I've noticed on my son's concert yesterday, they had the same problem. And so now, let me see. I can probably get this to do the same thing. Okay. Oh. You know what? I'd have to do it the other way. It Okay. It works really good when it's this way. This way, the uh, weft is just white strands to make this light yellow. So I'd have to peel it from up here. Okay. But you know what? This could go on here. I can make this all different kinds of shapes. It can even go in the tree or I can do confetti with it. And I love this. I'm going to cut another piece of this. I put this in the other one and I love it because the more you build up the more you build up the layers, the more magical it becomes. Okay. So here, you know, I'll just layer some of this stuff and then do the stitches down on it. And you're just creating a very complex world. So there is that. And then when it comes to the sky... Have your plants and trees and things grow up around. Like you could put a little ornamental shrub or tree that kind of hangs over the house. Um, oh, all right. So, and then I'm going to go and look in my button box and try to find some, a really interesting button to use as the doorknob. And then I can take, now I could do something, I could do like a Sharpie, but I'll probably use ink tents to draw the window grids in and all of that. So I think I probably run out of, Okay, run out of patience with most people here. So, but just know all the little stuff from your junk drawer, your sewing junk drawers. This is what's really good for this. And then all of my different flosses and the yarns. I, that yarn would be perfect on the roof since I wanted it to be a thatched roof. And then I won't forget, I've got all these glittery threads that I can use for flowers and different things. So, all right. Let me put this over and then get out the stuff I wanted to talk to you about for face. Oh, look at this. That'd be pretty cloud in the sky. Get a lot of the blue part, which is maybe, oh, maybe that would be good for the sun. So... There's a lot of exciting things you can do for this. Put away this real quick. I'll be right back. All right. But if you do work on that, please let me know. I want to see what you've done. Because I love that stuff. Oh, I just found a green button I had pulled aside maybe for a doorknob. I'm not even sure, but all right. So what I have learned, let me put this back up, put that back over. Don't touch any buttons and get us lost. Thank you for letting me show you how you can create a beautiful little wonderland. And I can take some of the lames or the satins and make little flowers, whatever you want, and add as much or as little that makes you happy because it is your world. So, what I was going to tell you about, I saw the cutest, the cutest ideas. 
and the prettiest. There was this one woman that had a beautiful gold champagne gold outfit on. She made a face mask out of laces, and they were ecru laces with golden beads. Oh, my gosh. Oh, it is easy, Kathleen Kendall. Hi, Kathleen Kendall again. Hi, sweetie. It's so good to see you again. So, what, what I heard about this woman is she has a face mask for every outfit she wears to work. She made them. And they are gorgeous. Oh, you saw that, Diana. Boy, oh boy, was that a great idea. So it got me thinking. And watch out when I get thinking. You know, it's going to be trouble. <laughs> Let me get all those out of the way. But what I wanted to tell you is the most comfortable mask have t-shirt material lining it. You don't have to go out and buy t-shirt material. Go look for one of your husband's old t-shirts or your wife's old t-shirts. Something that is thin and, and, and cut for the lining of the... Um, <laughs> Oh, I married a snake the first time, and that, but of the lining, and but what I read was that oh, and I meant to put I want to put a little heart on the door of my hobbit house because they're very loving little hobbits. So what I did is I went over and grabbed some of my batiks because I read the best. Um, face material for the outside is batik fabric. If you don't have the approved scientific material, but trust me, I made two masks for me and two for Mark, and we're going to need a lot more because when we do start going back out, we're going to need them. So I, I grabbed some different colors of batiks because batiks are a more densely woven fabric. If you put a batik on the outside and put the t-shirt fabric on the inside, it's a pretty darn good mask, okay? So, you can have fun with these masks. You make them on your own. Look at this. This is fun fabric. Look at this. Fun fabric. Exotic fabric. Just beautiful, beautiful fabrics. And I'm going to start making them in different colors. I even thought I'd like to make a mask so you can see me smile through it. So I, I ran out of my pure, pure, my totally clear vinyl. But this is not bad. And I would like, I wish people had more clear masks because I do lip reading. Any person that's hard of hearing has adapted. And it's hard for me to understand people in a solid mask. But I thought, we're quilters. Why don't we make a quilt pattern mask? Tell everybody who you are by um, dressing up. Your mask, if you could, I was thinking for Mark, I'm going to cut out um, a motorcycle and put it on his one of his masks. I'm going to, um, I'm going to, I haven't decided what quilt pattern. Nose and mouth cut out so she could breathe better. Was it like nothing there? <laughs> But anyway, but what I'm going to do, yeah, with, with, with the vinyl, I would just keep it where the mouth is. I wouldn't, you know, because you don't want the vinyl in front of your nose. See how it just gets all steamed up? <laughs> and if I do the vinyl, it's going to be held out of way. I'm going to make it into a shape where it sticks out a little. But I thought I would just do one with the vinyl. Anyway... But it's, it's hard because people can't tell you're smiling when you're wearing a mask. But I'm going to take and find, do a miniature quilt pattern. I might start out one 
Oh, the rest of her. Oh, I oh, I got gotcha. you. Oh, got gotcha. you. I got gotcha. you. So, um. Oh, but wait a minute. The rest of her face was covered. Did she have any anything outside of her? Because I think that defeats the purpose. But anyway, I'm going to make some quilt patterns. I'm going to look through some patterns. Because, you know, I can always think, oh, nine patch. You know, make your mask out of a nine patch. But I think I can be more creative than that. And then I thought I might like to do a crazy quilt mask. Now, you can embellish these. I might want one with some sequins. I might want one with some little tiny seed beads. But don't over decorate. I saw one at Joann's, the latest Joann's email sale, had one where they had done an outline. They made it look like cruel work. But don't make it too heavy. And uh, But I might try to do funny little scenes, show my sense of humor by doing something funny on the outside of it. Um, oh my gosh, yes. Or are the people that wear them under their chin. It's like, well, that's really good. But you know, the chin doesn't really need to be protected. It's this. <laughs> but anyway, oh, a watermelon mask. How cute. And I have leftover seed buttons. Thank you, Jody. Big lips. I've seen the lips on the mask. You could do a smile, a big smile on the mask. So I thought, why don't we, oh yeah, why don't we have a little mask contest to only if you want to participate. And um, I might give out a gift certificate, but have a little mask contest and whoever can come up with the most creative mask. And, uh, but you like to blend on, but Diana, the nice thing is when you have a mask on, nobody knows who you are. <laughs> it might be your way to be totally out there and crazy. But anyway, I'm going to challenge you to make the most creative mask. We're going to send a picture to me. We're going to have a contest and see who can win the most creative mask. As I would like for you to use batik if you can. If you have t-shirt material, fine. But then on top of it, you can embellish it with whatever you want. But I want you to at least have batik or a nice tight cotton weave. And that can be your foundation. And then you can, you can use lace. You can use feathers. You can use sequins. You can do anything. And um, make sure that you, you know, don't make it so it's not comfortable to breathe. But anyway, oh gosh, poor Diane's like, no more masks, no more masks. <laughs> oh, good point. Wash your fabric. So, and only if you want to, only if you want to. But, uh, and, and you know what? We'll make it, let's make it where it's not due too soon. Because, you know, we just got through doing the home blocks. But anyway, I'm really excited to think of the most unusual, the most, you know, it's whatever you guys vote for. Whatever you can think of, go for it, you know. You could do a mouth, the lipstick could be sequenced. I don't know. Whatever you want. Ah, that, that's a good idea. That's a very good idea. And uh, some people use pipe cleaners, but, you know, I when I made the, our other ones, we had bought a bag of Krispy Kreme, little Krispy Kreme donuts from the grocery store, and they had a wide piece of the metal to kind of like a, it would be like a twist tie, but thick. That worked wonderfully. But I love the throwaway pie tins. That's a great idea. Yeah, that African. Oh, my God, it was such a beautiful. She used lace to look like feathers on her cheeks. And then she had, oh, there you go. Yeah, it, whatever you can think of will have a contest for the most unique face mask 
And I think that would be a lot of fun. And, oh, there you go. Thank you, Susan. Hi, Michelle the Quilter. Oh, that's cute. He likes to garden. How cute is that? I know. You want a Krispy Kreme? Oh, boy, they're good. So, okay. So, um, you know, this, and, you know, it. let's say it doesn't, it has to be in the shape of a face mask. I'm not going to say if you don't have elastic or whatever, you don't have to make those ties, you know, if you don't have it. If you have ribbon, use a ribbon. But, uh why don't you think, just consider joining in our mask competition. And um, we'll say something, maybe the, what is two weeks from now in June? Let me, let me peek at my calendar. But, and you know what? If some of you want to crochet something, if you want to cross stitch something, you can do that. Okay, so two weeks from today would be the 14th. Let's say the 21st of June. Is, does that sound okay? Would June 21st be? And then I'll give you a choice where you want your gift certificate. Do you want it from Amazon, Pineapple Fabrics, wherever you want, whoever wins. But June 21st gives us three weeks. And that way, if you want to do something really fancy. <laughs> uh, so. Oh, I have seen you take and cut up an old T-shirt. When you pull them, they make lovely ties. But I, yes, yeah, Susan, you can tat something, it, but that has to be the embellishment. It can't be, of course, you can't crochet a mask and only wear the crochet part. And, um, but it can, you can embellish it with anything. So, you know what I'm thinking I have to make? A flamingo one. Hmm. <laughs> A great big old flamingo beak. But anyway, so put your thinking caps on, and this should be a lot of fun. Um, bring up an interesting COVID mask and look at them. So, oh, yeah, it'll be the first day of summer. And that gives you three good weeks, and that way I don't want you to be too stressed. That's the only problem. You'd have to crochet masks. That would be good for winter. But <laughs> All right. So now we have our next contest coming up. Is I hope you can try to use something like for the outside, like a um, batik. And I just have found the ones I made with T-shirt material on the inside are so comfortable. I have asthma. I did not like the idea of wearing a mask. But honest to goodness, they're very comfortable. And the t-shirt fabric, any weave is good for the inside too because all those different layers really help for it to be a little more um, effective. I had to try to think of that word. But anyway, I mean, you could have a mask and, and have a little birdie, make, make the mask look like a nest and have a little birdie sitting on it. The sky's the limit. The more bizarre, the better. Make a mask like an elephant trunk. You can do it any, anything. So put your, put your thinking caps on and go nuts with it. Go nuts with it. And if you don't want to wear it, but you just want to make the most fun or, or, you know, you don't have to wear it anywhere. It's just for fun. It gets us thinking about these masks and looking at them. Oh, thank you, Susan. And kind of looking at these masks in a, a little more fun and friendly way. Because I think they're going to be a big part of our life um, for at least a while, you know. So June 21st then. And um, you don't have to be a member of our group's IO to win. You just have to be able to send me. In fact, I'm going to give Susan a break. You have to send me a picture of it. I'm so slow, though. She probably could have done twice by now. 
But anyway, so um, you have to just send me a picture. And please don't buy one and enter it because that, that would get me in trouble with YouTube. That would violate copyright laws. So if you want to copy something you see anywhere, that's fine. But don't buy one. But you know what I was seeing? I was seeing ads for like Yoda masks and all these. So people are. People are starting to have fun with them. I love the creativity that's coming out with people during all of this. So... Yeah. Oh no. <laughs> Aww. But Diana, how wonderful to be so talented. You can make anything and you make stuff people want and they want to buy. So that's the, that's the good side of, you know, I remember when people hear your quilter, Oh, can you hem a pair of pants for me? Like, no. <laughs> But anyway, this could be a lot of fun. And go anywhere, think of your ideas, sit back, and just think. And uh, it could be an awful lot of fun. And if you want to, you can enter up to five masks that you make yourself. The more you enter, the higher the chances are you'll win. So, how about that? Because some of you might go, well, I, I, I got this idea and this idea and this idea. Knowing Jody, oh, my God, that, guy, that gal has great ideas. That's Father's Day. Okay, so just it'll be Father's Day. We'll have to decide. I guess it's not fair. We'll decide if we have a Father's Day show or if we want to bump it up to Saturday. We'll make that decision next week or the week after. So anyway, okay. Oh, good. That's wonderful. Thank you, Susan. Oh, yeah. Oh, yes, Miss Diana. You're so talented. Okay, so now we have our next challenge. And um, I'm glad we're taking three weeks to get it in because... I know I felt a little pressure trying to get all the house blocks out. It was like, whoa. But, um, all right, so I think, sorry to kind of dump more ideas on you, but it just, I happened, it was one of those things where I saw on this, the mask, I saw on Joanne Fabrics, decorate your mask, and I saw this and I, it kind of was like, okay, I keep hearing and seeing this, what can I do with that? But I love the idea of a watermelon mask, oh my gosh. And, um, oh my gosh, there's just so many ideas, so many ideas. So be thinking, put your artistic, oh, I feel much better. I See, this is where <sighs> having something exciting, having something that you enjoy doing, you know, um, how it just makes life so much more fun. So, anyway, oh, this, this will be a lot of fun. Yeah, I'm sad because I can't go camping, and I love camping, and can't go camping, can't do anything. But now we have some fun, exciting things to do. And I will be this week starting a new quilt because I've been very good. I mean, you know I've been very good at getting another project done and out. So, I've been good. I deserve it. So, I'm going to start today, after I work on my bead, my beaded necklace. But I'm going to start today. And guess what I'm going to do? I have to have 10 and 3 quarter inch strips. 10 and 3 quarter inches by length of fabric. I'm going to tear them. I love that. So, anyway. Yeah, and you can have, you know, oh my gosh. You can have masks that have little batteries that do stuff, light up, whatever. I mean, sky's the limit. This could be really, really cute. This could be really cute. Maybe what I should do is take the best of our mask and send them to the quilt show for them to see. But um, I've been enjoying watching Alex Anderson. She's a sweetheart, and she's funny. So she, it's been nice to watch. Oh, here we go. 
They put your father-in-law in ICU and intubated him. He had a seizure and lungs are horrible. Oh, babe. Oh, honey. But right now, he's, he's intubated, so at least hopefully he's safe. Oh, my gosh. Had he been sick at all? Oh, darling. Oh, darling. Hmm. Oh, yes, I watched Ricky Tim's tear that fabric, too. It was awesome. I was like, go, Ricky. Go, Ricky. <laughs> I love it. I actually get a lot of enjoyment out of tearing fabric. And to those of you that don't know, you know, you either love to rip fabric or you hate it. There's not much in between. But you, if it's a cotton, a natural, like linen, natural fiber fabric, it tears perfectly on the grain line. So, it's a good thing to do. Okay. He's, oh, honey. Yeah, he didn't get enough oxygen. But hopefully now they've got him intubated. And, oh, yeah, he's, oh, that is such high risk. Okay. Okay, sweetheart. You go ahead and call the family people and tell them. Let us know, too, if, you know, how he's doing. Um, let us know in the group, please. And, uh, ah, uh, I know that's the hard part. They can't, it's, it's so hard. I was even thinking, gosh, you know, you want to be in a hospital if they have COVID because you want them to be COVID-19 because you want them to be able to do anything they can, but at the same time, you know, Ah, uh, have you, there is a man down in Palm Beach, Florida or something. His wife is getting cancer treatment and he can't be with her because they have to, you know, she's so vulnerable to the coronavirus and he comes every day and sits up a chair on the sidewalk where she can see him from her bed and they talk to each other. It's so sweet. But yes, we will be thinking of your father-in-law and hoping that they can treat him. Mm. Wow. So, let's see. It's a, about time for me to get mosey. And is there anything else so you want to talk about? Any questions you have? Are you at all I mean are 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 you excited about doing the face mask challenge? Is because you only have to do it if you want to. One thing about this site, this is a happy site. This is not a place where you're forced to do anything you don't want to do. I love that little, I love my inflatable flamingo peeking over our, our heart at home box. That tickles me. <laughs> oh, gosh. But if you have, uh, oh, you like the Hobbit house. Good. Self-portraits, yep. So, uh, well, y'all are the best. Have a safe week. Oh, Diana Wright, remember I told you about a month ago we had 85 cases in Forsyth County? We now have probably 1,300. We've had a huge spike here. We opened, unfortunately, a couple weeks ago, and it has spiked awfully so we're being extremely careful but um that's i'm not taking a chance i watched my little russell on the concert they gave last night on youtube and i gotta see that baby again and i can't wait to see the new baby in two months do you realize in two months i'll be a grandma again so let's all stay safe be, go the extra mile to be careful, okay? This is your life, and each of you means so much. Each of you means so much. So thank you. Do something just for yourself. That'll help keep the spirits up because it is tough. And um, take really good care of yourself. You mean the world to me. I don't know what I would have done these past four months without you. So take good care. Mwah. And can't wait to see your Hobbit houses. Feel free to send me a picture if you make one. All right. 
Love you bunches. Stay safe and well. Oh, I forgot to show pictures. We'll show pictures next time. Okay? We'll show them next time. Bye-bye, everybody. I know. Two hours went by. Zoom. <laughs> Take good care. You're the best. And I'll keep working on my Hobbit house and give you more ideas. Bye-bye, everybody. Take care. Take good care of yourself. And Susan, I'll be thinking of your father-in-law, darling. Mm. We'll think of you. Stay safe, please. And Teresa, 